Hey there everybody, Mr. D here, and in this video we're going to be talking about just some of the geometry problems we touched on in class. Okay, So this was a document that was shared with you all, and here are all the worked out solutions. I'm just going to kind of briefly go through each problem in case we forgot. Alright, so for the first one, we have find the perimeter of the quadrilateral below. Or sorry, it's telling us the perimeter is 99, find the value of x. So perimeter just means add up all the sides together. So that's what we did over here, and set that equal to 99. We combine like terms on the left-hand side, move the 9 over, divide out the 10, we get x equals 9. So again, the, the thing that this is really quizzing you on is do you know what that word perimeter means? The next one is going to be kind of dissecting a word problem into a diagram, and then the diagram to an equation. So here it says the length of a rectangle is 5 times its width. So I drew a rectangle, and I have a length and a width. But it's saying that the length is equal to 5 times the width, so instead of length, I'm going to call that 5w. Then it says the area is 320. Well, the area for a rectangle is length times width, so I can set that equal to 320. And if I know the length was 5w, I can plug that in. Right? So instead of length, I plugged in 5w, so now we simplify. 5w times w is 5w squared. Divide out the 5, we get w equals 8. And I'm noticing now, I actually didn't complete this problem. We want to find the perimeter. Well, if I know w is 8, that means 5w, that would be 40. So we have a 40 by 8 rectangle. So if I added all of these together, uh, 8 and 8 is 16, 40 and 40 is 80, so that would be 96. So 96 inches would be the perimeter there. Alright, this next one we talked about together in class. Here we have a training field is formed by joining this rectangular part to two semicircles. And we also discussed in class that when you join these two semicircles together, you create a full circle. They give us the dimensions of the rectangle, and then they ask us to figure out what is the length around the track. So if I were to run around this track, how far am I running? Essentially, we're finding the perimeter of this shape. So I've got two straightaway sections. Those are each 81 meters in length. So 2 times 81. That's where this 162 comes from. And then we have those two semicircles that combine to create a full circle. And I'm just trying to find the perimeter or circumference of that. There's two ways I could do it. 2 pi r, 2 times pi times radius, or pi times diameter. Well, for this one, since I know the diameter is 65, I'm going to go ahead and use pi times diameter. And that's where I get this 204.1 value. So to find the overall perimeter, I'm just going to add the red segments to the black segments, and we'll call it a day. Another trick that we have to be careful of is proper units. Since this was dealing with a length, we're going to use our regular meters. If this was an area, it would be meters squared. And we talked about in class, the easy way to remember that is squaria. And if it was cubic, that would be a three-dimensional volume. All right, next one. We want to find the area of a shaded region. So here we have a rectangle with a semicircle being chopped out. So the general process is we want the area of the rectangle, then we're going to take away the area of that semicircle. Well, the area of a rectangle is pretty straightforward, length times width. And since I know this dimension here is 12, that's also the diameter of that little semicircle, which means the radius would have to be 6. And if the radius is 6, that means the height of the rectangle would be 6 as well. So that's where I get that value of 6. So length times width for the rectangle gives me 72. And to find the area of the semicircle, well, area of a circle is pi r squared, but we're taking half of it, so I need to chop that in half. That's why there's this divided 2 piece. So from here, straight into the calculator, and we get our answer. This next one is going to be extremely similar. So again, we're going to do the rectangle minus the semicircle. They give me the height of the rectangle, which is also giving me the radius of that semicircle. I can then use that radius to figure out the diameter being 16. Well, that's also now the length of the rectangle. So that's where I'm getting the 16 from. To calculate the area, length times width, 16 times 8, you get 128. Over here, pi r squared again, chop it in half because we only have half of a circle. And we're good. This next one, we have a semicircle, and we have to subtract away the area of the rectangle. So the radius here is 9, and this 
diameter then would be 18. So the area of that semicircle, pi r squared over 2. And then the area of the triangle is 1 half base times height. Well, this base length was 18 and the height was 9. So we have 1 half 18 times 9. From here, we go straight into our calculator. And we got the answer of 46.17 millimeters squared. I know it has to be squared because we're dealing with area. All right, the next one, we have similar figures. Anytime you see the word similar, that means sides are proportional. So what I did is I kind of color-coded the sides that pair up with one another. If you're ever confused on which side goes with which, most of the time you can look at it and tell. You can also pay attention to the order of these letters. So AB corresponds to JK. AB, JK. Uh, let's see, CD corresponds to LM. So CD corresponds to LM. So that's where you can figure out which sides are corresponding to which. So I set a ratio. The ratio of 2 to 3.2 has to be the same as the ratio from 7 to X. I could have done 4 and 6.4 or I could have done 3 and 4.8. It does not matter which side pair you choose, just as long as they're corresponding. From here we can cross multiply. So 2X and then 7 times 3.2, which is 22.4, and solve. Last and final one. We have intersecting lines. We want to find the measures or values of X and Z. Well, first we have vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. So C is kind of a, Z is kind of a freebie for us. To figure out X, we have to do a little extra work. So I have two angles that combine to be a straight line. So I could add those up and set it equal to 180. And that's exactly what's happening over here. So the hard part of this is, is kind of realizing that relationship, but as soon as you get that equation set up, it's going to be pretty straightforward. Another way you could do this is we could come to the realization that, hey, if I want this angle here, 112 plus something has to be 180. That something would be 68. And then I could say, hey, we got vertical angles. 68 equals, oops, 10x minus 52. You're going to get the same answer regardless. I wouldn't really argue one is easier than the other. They're just different ways to think about it. All right, that wraps it up with these geometry problems that we talked about in class. Again, difficulty levels not terribly high. It's just been a while since we've seen them. But you know the drill. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, good luck, have fun, be safe, rule tide.